Okay, um, I'm Maud Francis. I'm at the University of New South Wales, managing library repository services for about the last eight or nine years. So, as stipulated in the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research, researchers are expected to ensure that their data are well managed. Um, but to do this, institutions need to provide the infrastructure and support services. To this end, the UNSW IT Investment Plan is funding several projects over five years at UNSW to build enterprise systems for managing the university's research data. During 2013, the projects delivered services for research data management planning and for archival storage, and these were prioritised by academics around the university. Under direction from the Division of Research, the services were collaboratively developed by the UNSW IT and the library, as with the other universities. And during 2014, the data management planning and storage services were extended to specifically cater for the university's higher degree research candidates. So prioritisation of the investment plan for research was based on comprehensive input, as I said, from academic and research areas of the university. The top selected programmers for research data management services and in particular for archival storage of data. So my focus today is on the yellow and red bars in the um, diagram that you can see, which relate to research data management planning um, for academics and HDR candidates. So at UNSW, uh, RDMP, Research Data Management Plan, is a web-based service built by the Library Repository Services team. And it was a critical component of the data storage project because the Division of Research who directed the project stated, like other universities, at Sydney in particular, that archival storage was only to be allocated after completion of a, an RDMP for the project. So to kick it off, a business advisory group with membership from academic stakeholders, IT, and the library, as well as the Graduate Research School and Ethics and Compliance Unit was established. And this ensured that the services and system were implemented with reference to existing infrastructure and practice. The RTMP was developed as a second component of an existing library service, ResData, which was built with funding from ANS during 2011 to 12 to deliver records of research data sets, so publishing data to Research Data Australia. The thinking behind building a research data management planning service on an existing repository-based system for managing research data was that metadata and res data, some of which is provided by other information systems at the university, can be reused across the research lifecycle. Fundamental to this thinking is that existing institutional sources of truth are leveraged where possible. This reduces the data entry burden for researchers and optimizes the accuracy of the information in the plan. A further consideration relates to integration of and co-location of services for data management across the research lifecycle. Currently planning storage and discovery, but with future possibilities for preservation of data um, and services for processing, analyzing, and sharing data during active phases of a project. So what do these integrations look like? Starting with the purple boxes at the top, enterprise services provide information about people and grants. Res Data receives this information in a daily feed from the UNSW Data Warehouse, which there is named Julia in the brown box. It's now been renamed as the Info Hub. The RDMP in the blue boxes on the left, or I think it's the left, yes, and the middle section of the diagram comprises um, a custom-built user interface, which researchers use to create and edit research data management plans. Uh, the information is stored and indexed in a Fedora repository, and information from Fedora is communicated via the provisioning service, which is another brown box in the lower center, um, to the UNSW data archive at the bottom of the diagram. Details of research projects and their data, as well as roles and access permissions of personnel and research teams, are used to define the storage space in the data archive. And the workflow for plans relating to postgraduate theses um, draw also on information from the UNSW student system. And that's information about the candidate, their supervisors, and the research project. So as you can see, there's a lot of similarities with other services we've talked about today. So the rollout and uptake. It was piloted in initially in 2014 with four research groups, um, 50 sessions with research committees and all faculties and the staff and candidates and schools and research centers were conducted um, during August to May um, last year and this year. 
And these were run jointly by the research support specialist in IT um, and another staff person there, the library outreach team, uh, member from the team and someone from library repository services. So currently we have 300 unique users, 250 of whom are staff and 50 are HDR candidates. And more than 80% of the um, plans are from people in medicine, science and engineering. 160 storage requests have been made from these plans. So where do users get help? Well, the Res Data Help Guide provides a step-by-step -step guide for users. And it's also a good place to go if you want to understand the inner workings of the service um, for people outside the university because the help files are available um, prior to sign-in on the Res Data site and I'll provide the URL for that later. There's also a website managed by the Division of Research which has comprehensive information about research data management. So you can see the top left box there is research data management planning and it links to the Res Data site. Support for library research data management services is incorporated also into services that the library's outreach team um, delivers. This leverages the relationships that have developed already with um, UNSW researchers. And in delivering these services, the librarians work really closely with the library repository services team who built the service and IT's research support specialist who provides access uh, advice on the data archive. Information about the RDMPs has also been incorporated into the orientation to research sessions for new researchers and HDR induction sessions. So I want to touch just briefly on sustainability and operational matters. So in the first instance, the board composition, I think, is really important because it ensures that the services and tools for managing research data are aligned with the university's strategies um, and practice. Having senior stakeholders on the board provides the resources and visibility required to achieve the project goals. So a fundamental requirement for sustainability, in my view, is a real, really tight alignment between the parties and interests, um, the library, division of research, IT, governance and support services, and policy, infrastructure, and research practice. Okay, improvements in future plans. Um, so we, did, we conducted a survey of users um, sometime last year. And out of that, um, one of the issues that arose was that when someone had completed a research project, then gaining storage by actually filling out a data management plan was kind of, um, yeah, putting the, the horse and cart um, the wrong way around. That in fact, the planning was a little late. So we've created a reduced version, which is called a post-project storage allocation form, which has the, some mandatory fields required by the Divi Division of Research for them to access the storage, but doesn't require that intensive planning um, of um, projects, of, of data management as with existing projects. So we also responded with um, easier navigation, pre-populating four subject codes from the info it feed, and th those three are completed. And at present, we're looking at ethics and compliance integration, more sample RDMPs in the help documentation, and a clone function, um, which enables someone who's created one plan to then duplicate it um, and change a few fields for a second plan. Future plans are to integrate the ORCID feed, feed um, once we can get it out of the data warehouse, and respond to requirements of funding bodies as they arise in Australia. And this, as most of you, several of you will know, is a pattern um, in the US and UK and Europe where funding bodies are acquiring data management plans and most of the planning tools are actually driven by those requirements. Um, further integration also with metadata and res data data set records, the other part of the system, and to extend the RDMPs and metadata with disciplinary schema, for example, um, DBI. So I'm just going to give you a really quick um, flick through a couple of slides to show you what it looks like. So as I said, um, you sign in here at the res data site. The help on the top right um, under the library banner um, is where anyone can go prior to sign in. I'm going to use a plan prepared for the demonstration, um, a previous demonstration, and I'll, so I'll therefore be going into the edit function. Note that the plan on the right side under the manage button can be um, exported as well as a PDF document. Um, you can view it, have a look at storage status, um, etc. So here's one we prepared earlier. Uh, I'm not showing the complete page, but you can see along the top of the page the plans organized under tabs that relate to project governance, data organization, ethics and privacy, IP and copyright, etc. Data organization and documentation. As with Sydney's, so there's a lot of drop-down options. 
If the response to the question about non-digital data were no, the sections for description and location of those data would not appear on the form. So basically based on a yes-no response in many cases, further sections of the form will be provided. Some fields are mandatory, others not, and in a, a, bill, a plan can be saved as a draft, in which case nothing's really mandatory, except I think the title and uh, lead chief investigator. Um, in this case, to get storage and actually complete a plan, although it's, um, as um, Katrina mentioned, a living document, not necessarily completed. Yeah, so here on the ethics page, um, because I selected no to the first question, further questions about the data are asked. And had I responded yes, I would be asked to provide an approval number. Um, and we're pl currently planning integration with the research ethics and compliance systems so that this information can be automatically populated. On the IP and copyright section, note that more than one copyright year is possible, so be acknowledged that um, this is often required for longitudinal studies and for research involving multiple data sets. So. And users can navigate back and forth um, at will. Initially, they had to go um, in one direction from start to finish, and that um, proved quite problematic. It's not quite the way research is done. So one of our early enhancements was to take away that requirement to um, complete, complete the plan um, in the order it was presented. And finally, to the preview page. So that's all I'm going to show you of the plan. As I mentioned earlier, the help files are a pretty detailed run through the, the plan and included a lot of screenshots from, from sections of the plan. And here's a link to Rosada and to the data management toolkit page I showed you. And at the bottom there is a presentation um, which actually goes into a lot more detail. It's a um, peer review paper which is available through that DOI and it provides a lot of detail on the actual um, technology um, and thinking behind the plan. So that's it. Thanks.